Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. Here's an interesting question from an entrance exam in a Japanese university. Is tangent of one degree a rational number? Justify your answer with a proof. This is one of the shortest entrance exam questions I've ever seen, and yet it is still a very interesting and challenging problem. I thank Larry Chan for the suggestion. Can you figure it out? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this question. To get started, let me briefly review rational numbers. They're often denoted by the blackboard Q symbol. A rational number is defined as a number that can be expressed as A over B, where A and B are integers. Rational numbers include numbers like 0, 1 half, 0 0.75, 10, negative 6, or 0 0.3 recurring. Basically, a rational number is one whose decimal expansion either terminates after some number of terms, or it has a repeating pattern. Now there's a joke. A teacher says pi is irrational and can't be written as a fraction. And a smart Alex student says, what about pi over one? Well, this doesn't mean pi is a rational number because pi in the numerator is not an integer. A rational number must have a and b be integers. So this then brings us to irrational numbers, which are denoted by the real numbers minus the rational numbers. So these are numbers that cannot be written as a over b, where a and b are integers. Common irrational numbers are the square root of two, pi, e, negative square root of five, the golden ratio, or the natural logarithm of two. In these numbers, the decimal expansion never terminates or has any repeating pattern. But how do we know the decimal expansion never terminates or repeats? How do we know a number is actually a rational number? Is it possible that the pattern might repeat after some number of points? So mathematicians don't just make laws because they see observations, they need to actually prove it logically. So let's get started on a famous proof. If P is a prime, then the square root of P is irrational. This will be a proof by contradiction. So we will suppose the opposite, that square root of P is rational. So that would mean square root of P would be equal to A over B for some integers A and B. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by B to get b root p is equal to a, and then we'll square both sides of the equation, so we have b squared, p is equal to a squared. Now every prime factor in the prime factorization of a or b must appear an even number of times in a squared or b squared. Now the left hand side, b squared p, will have an odd number of factors of p, while the right side, a squared, will have an even number of factors. So, in the prime factorization of each side of the equation, there are an odd number of factors of p in b squared p, but an even number of factors of p in a squared. So this is a contradiction. So our assumption that the square root of p was rational was false, and therefore, square root of p must be rational. There's a similar proof that if k is not a perfect square, then the square root of k is irrational. I'll leave the details to the viewer. Now, by this logic, we have irrational numbers like the square root of two, the square root of three, square root of 42, and the square root of 69. So it is a mathematical fact that irrational numbers exist. But just because something is true doesn't mean people will like it. According to legend, Hippasus was one of the first people to think about irrational numbers when he proved that the square root of two was irrational. Hippasus lived in ancient Greece, and he belonged to a school of mathematicians led by Pythagoras. Pythagoras had certain ideas about the universe and order, and he thought it was incomprehensible there could exist numbers that couldn't be expressed as the ratio of integers. So for his discovery, Hippasus was sentenced to death. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is the same Pythagoras 
of the a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared fame. However, there are other facts you didn't learn in school. Historians are pretty sure he's not the first to have known about it, nor was he the first to prove it. It is known by other names in other countries, and mathematicians are working to restore this truth. Some historians are wondering whether Pythagoras even existed as an individual figure. And I'm just a simple mathematician on YouTube, but I don't know what's more irrational. Is it that Pythagoras didn't exist and he's being honored for something he didn't prove or discover? Or he did exist and he actually sentenced someone to death for discovering irrational numbers? I'm not sure. I will leave it to the mathematicians to decide. I don't want to go too far off on a tangent, so let's return to the original question. So we are going to show that tangent of one degree is irrational. And like the other proof, we are going to show this by contradiction. So let's suppose instead that tangent of one degree is a rational number. So an important part in this proof is that tangent of one degree, tangent of two degrees, tangent of three degrees, all the way up to tangent of 60 degrees will all be non-zero and well-defined values. So now let's use the tangent sum formula. Tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta all over one minus tangent alpha times tangent beta. So let's take a look at tangent of two degrees. We know this is a well-defined value. It only remains to know if it's a rational or irrational number. Now, since tangent of one degrees is rational, let's try to use this fact. So let's rewrite tangent of two degrees in the following way. We write it as tangent of one degree plus one degree. We can apply the tangent sum formula to get this is equal to tangent of one degree plus tangent of one degree all over one minus tangent of one degree times tangent of one degree. We have presumed that tangent of one degree is a rational number. So this simplifies to be rational plus rational all over one minus rational times rational. Here we have non-zero rational numbers. We know the denominator is not zero because tangent of two degrees is a well-defined number. So we have the sum of rational numbers in the numerator, we have the product of rational numbers in the denominator, then we have a difference of rational numbers, and then we have the ratio of rational numbers where the denominator is not zero. It all ends up working out that this will be a rational number. So what we have is that if tangent of one degree is rational, then we know the tangent of two degrees is rational. We can now apply the same thing to consider tangent of three degrees. We will rewrite this as tangent of two degrees plus one degree. We then apply the tangent sum formula. Now we have the sum, the product, the difference, and the ratio of rational numbers. And we know the denominator is not zero because tangent of three degrees is well defined. So this all ends up working out that this will be a rational number as well. So if tangent of one degree is rational, then tangent of two degrees is rational, which implies tangent of three degrees is rational, and we can continue the logic. Tangent of four degrees will be rational, and so on, all the way up to tangent of 60 degrees being rational. But now, let's pull up a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. We know that tangent of 60 degrees is equal to root three, which we proved is an irrational number. So we have a contradiction. It is not possible that tangent of one degree is rational. It must be the case that tangent of one degree is irrational. Q E D. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problem, one video at a time.